Well, good morning, friends. Blessed Good Friday to you all. And welcome to uh, Morning Devotions with uh, Pastor Greg. I'm sitting here in my basement um, this Good Friday morning and uh, coming to you live on Facebook Live. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, if you're joining me, please uh, make a comment down below that you're that you're there. Just comment down below, and and uh, I'd appreciate knowing that. Also, if you have a prayer request, uh, I invite you to um, post that as well, or send me a a personal message. That would be great as well. Um, just want to remind you uh, later today at five o'clock is to be exact. Um, Today we are having our Good Friday worship service on Facebook Live, this very channel, and so I invite you to tune in for that. Our text for today, I've got two scripture passages, uh, one from uh, Matthew chapter uh, 27, just uh, one particular verse, verse uh, 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour... Until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. Darkness all over the land. This is reminiscent of um, when God's people were enslaved in Egypt. Uh, right before uh, he led them into freedom, after the sacrifice of the Passover lamb, uh, God sent a plague of darkness that lasted three days. It was a shadowy uh, prelude to their redemption. You see, after that darkness, the lamb um, that all the people were to sacrifice and paint the blood on their doorpost, after that darkness, the lamb would die. And as a result of that, the people would be set free. You see, in the sacrifice of the Father's Lamb, we are freed. And that brings me to today. To today and the, and the, and the passage that I just read to you. Um, you see, although Scripture doesn't specifically mention this, one cannot help but ponder the divine juxtaposition of the events of Good Friday. In particular, we know that Jesus hung on the cross on that dark afternoon. As Matthew just, the passage I just read to you from Matthew, he was hung there on the cross from noon until three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and it was dark. As darkness fell over the land in Egypt, darkness fell over the land here as well. It was dark from noon until three. You see, what was happening elsewhere in Jerusalem? Well, in particular, the temple was busy with activity. It's, it was Passover weekend, after all. And lambs were being sacrificed by priests and household leaders in the courtyards of Israel by the thousands. Pilgrims had traveled far and wide to, every year to come to Jerusalem for Passover. They had traveled far and wide, and uh, the place was packed, bulging at the seams, living on top of one another. And so it, in order to accommodate all these visitors, um, they came in shifts. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, to have their lamb sacrificed. The last being the time of the unusual evening sacrifice or not unusual, but the usual evening sacrifice. And at the very same time, all those lambs are being sacrificed in the temple that Friday afternoon, the true lamb of God, the one without blemish, without spot or defect. He was entering the Holy of Holies in heaven presenting himself as a final sacrifice for the sin of the world. You see, on a small hill not far away from the city, 
not far away from the temple, just outside the city wall, hung the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hung the very Lamb of God upon whom all those thousands of sacrifice lambs pointed. The Lamb to replace all lambs. And now this Lamb, at, as he hung there from noon until three, and darkness was over the land during that period of time, just like in Israel, just like in Israel, that a plague of darkness lasted three days when God's people were held in captivity in Israel. For three days, dark, darkness was all over the land, and after that darkness, their lambs were sacrificed likewise here for three hours. The Lamb of God hung on a cross on a hill for three hours. And at the end of that three hours, he died. At the end of that three hours, that lamb was sacrificed, that lamb of God. Passover in Jesus' day was really a big family occasion for the Israelites, much like uh, family uh, Christmas is a big family occasion for us. Uh, there are all kinds of hugs and smiles and fine dinners. Um, but there was finally also a meal of uh, a time of uh, reflecting upon God's mercy and goodness and delivering people from uh, their people from bondage in Egypt. And in the end, that is the way it's supposed to be in, uh, in sharing the most important message and focus of, of this feast, and that is God's great deliverance of us all. As Gentiles, we don't... Uh, can't really appreciate that, or nor do we share that rich heritage of festival uh, of a festal dating going back centuries to the time of the Exodus. But there is a heritage that we do share with ancient Israelites, and that heritage that we do share is being born into slavery of sin and death, without God and without hope in the world, as Saint Paul tells us in Ephesians two. You see, it is a heritage of a pointless, purposeless life and a hopeless future. It's a heritage that is much more than being disadvantaged or underprivileged. It is a heritage of the wages of sin and death and separation from God forever. But Christ, as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 5, Christ Jesus is our Passover lamb. And Christ Jesus, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Yes, darkness was over the land from noon until three for three hours. Until he breathed his last when he was sacrificed. And Paul reminds us, thanks be to God, that Christ, our Passover lamb, is for us. It is for you. He is for me. And there on the cross... On that hill, not far outside of the city gate, hung the very Lamb of God who takes away our sin, who takes away our shame, who takes away our guilt. There is the one faith looks to, there, there one looks to in faith with uh, uh, trusting and, and clinging to, trusting to and clinging to the forgiveness, the hope, and the final deliverance that we all share. And there is the Lamb whose life, death, completely changes our life and our death as we live by faith and the joy of salvation. So as you contemplate this Good Friday, as you prepare for your own personal devotion and however you, you plan to worship this day, uh, I pray that you will remember and reflect upon the reality that uh, Jesus is the sacrifice that that all other sacrifices point to. That Jesus, as all these other sacrifices are designed, were designed to help us help us remember how God delivered His people from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Jesus, our sacrifice, 
delivers us from our bondage of slavery to sin, death, and the devil. There is a, a wonderful hymn. Uh, it's uh, been part of the church for, for many, many years, and you all know it. It goes like this. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May our God richly bless you and encourage you and strengthen you in the faith. And as you uh, are secluded at home, staying close to home, separated from the body of Christ, at least physically, physically separated from the body of Christ. Remember that Jesus himself, as he hung there as our Lamb, as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he too was secluded. He too was separated from his Father. And he did all of that for you. He did all of that for me. So that by his blood, you and I are finally set free from the power of sin, from the power of death, from the power of the devil and so cling to that cling to that remember that hymn my faith looks up to thee thou lamb of calvary savior divine now hear me while i pray take all my guilt away oh let me from this day be holy thine and it's because of this day good friday that you and i are his May God bless, richly bless you and encourage you and strengthen you this day. And um, remember, at 5 o'clock on this very channel, 5 o'clock this afternoon, come join us as we uh, celebrate, as we remember uh, Good Friday and, um, at Christ Lutheran Church in our service of Tenebrae. Lord be with you all. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Bye.